Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I've been wanting to make this for so long. So here I'm gonna introduce the new 2022 line of signature model guitars I have with Schechter. And this video is gonna be going through all the specs and then by extension, going through all the specs of a guitar that I look for and why I designed them this way. I'm so proud of these and they're and awesome. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. There's not a lot of swearing on the channel, but this is an appropriate time to do it. We have a six string, seven string, and eight string, and lefty versions this time around, which is uh, especially cool. Coming out very, very soon or in stores now, depending on when this video comes out. I guess I'll start with the, the intention for me to have a signature model guitar. I wanted to put an eight string on the market that was a bit more versatile in both how it sounded and how it looked. I think that eight strings, they're new and exciting and they have so much potential that's only just beginning to be explored. And I just really fell in love with this instrument. And so my purpose of getting a signature model was to get one of these out there. There's a new headstock. What I've been calling matte black and what everyone at Schecter continues to tell me to not call it that because that's not technically what it is. The new black wings on the guitar as well as on the headstock. And then of course the fan fretting, as you can see, the frets are not perfectly straight all the way through. And that's on the seven and eight string, but I'll get into all of that once I get into the more uh, nerdy bits. For this video, I'm gonna try to start with the basic specs for people that are more new to the electric guitar. And then I'll try to get nerdier and nerdier as I go, though I don't have anything scripted for today. There's a big range on this one. I'll start with the basic specs and I'll start with the six string. It's a neck through body. The wood here is mahogany and it goes all the way through from the body to the neck. There's three different ways generally that you can make guitars. One is right here with the neck through. Then you have set neck where you can glue the neck in and then you have bolt on, um, which is the most common. You actually bolt it in, but I love having the neck through. I just think it's classy. I just, I, I think it's beautiful. I've always felt like the neck through guitars just feel a bit more special. And I do like how when you're up here on the higher frets, you get a lot of room there. If you got a bolt on, there's a big block here that you gotta go around. It's made out of mahogany in the middle. Mahogany is a very classic electric guitar wood. Like when we did the video with the Les Paul, the like first solid body electric guitar ever, though the history is a lot more complicated than that. That did have a piece of mahogany straight through with the wings on it. Everything that the strings are touching, the hardware that the strings are touching, are touching the mahogany. And then I have swamp ash for the wings. Not nearly as heavy, so it gets rid of some of that weight and I think it looks really great. Another reason why I did that was just visually, even if this guitar is like 12 pixels in a video, you can still tell the design because it has like this racing stripe, you know, look to it. I wanted to have like a signature look but not be something that you'd need to know who I am to want to have one. Like it's just a really killer guitar and looks awesome. We have an ebony board, matches this uh, black look quite a bit. The scale length is how long the strings are from the nut right here to the bridge. And this is 25 and a half on the six string. That is a super, super standard scale length. That's what I've been playing for the majority of the time that I've been playing guitar. Jumbo frets on it. Dots on the fretboard past the 12th. I find I don't really need them here. It's just a cleaner look. And if I'm playing over here, I'm always looking at the dots on top. I only need them once I get here, but it's really on the seven and especially the eight where these dots really become crucial. And I think having the triple dot too at the top is just kind of fun. It's like, do we have a 24th fret? Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> kind of calls attention to itself. All the hardware on is hip shot hardware, hip shot bridge, hip shot tuners, locking tuners. I have a lot of opinions about locking tuners, as Jake can tell. A regular tuner works. You just put the string in there and then you wind it around the post and then that tension keeps it on. You need to spend a lot of time winding when you restring your guitar. The way that locking tuners work is you just put the string in, pull it tight, and then you lock it in. And there's just a little gear that presses up against the string and then keeps it in there. So you can tell on this, there's no wind to them. The high E string doesn't even get to one full wound. There's a lot of benefits to that. One obvious one is that it's way easier to restring your guitar. Because you don't have this extra wound and less parts of the strings to stretch on the post, you get much more tuning stability from the locking tuners from not having that extra wound. You could have a locking nut like you would have with a whammy bar as well, but then changing the tuning is much, much harder. You are getting better tuning stability than the locking tuners, but if you're not gonna be doing big dive bombs or something, then you really 
don't need it. It's a bit more expensive as well. This is perfect for me. A big leap in tuning stability and big leap in just ease of use from restringing the guitar. The only downside is just a very slight bump in price. Very slight. It's just an extra gear on each tuner. I think every guitar should have locking tuners. Anytime I restring a guitar that doesn't have it and I'm spending the time winding the post, I just kind of get mad. Like, why am I doing this? Do we not have gear technology like <laughs> so that's my rant uh there while we're over here the new headstock i think is just really really cool if i'm looking into it way too deeply the part of the headstock that has the black paint on it and it's still open pore so you can see the wood it's super super cool if you're just looking at that it's a really spiky headstock it's like this is for metal distort this guitar but then if you're looking at it from the sides and these little swoops this is more like Let's play a nice little tune. This guitar is for both. Put it through a ton of distortion or play sparkly Midwest emo on them, you know? <laughs> and then I got an Anchor on the back because Anchor is the first song that I wrote with an eight string guitar. I got an eight string guitar, wrote that song immediately and just fell in love with eight string guitars. So that's kind of a, a nod to that. You're off exploring the seven seas of extended range. <laughs> They're not on this one because it's a six string. And then I wrote my signature like a bajillion times. Signature is the only time that my name is on it. So if you just pick this up at a guitar shop and, and you don't know who I am, it's just a killer guitar. We'll go to the pickups. Usually with signature model guitars, it's for a musician, a guitar player that has a very particular sound. Like they go out and tour and they play this certain style of music. And so normally signature model guitar pickups are like geared to do one particular thing. They're like sculpted to do this one genre really, really well. But for mine, I want them to be as versatile as possible. So these are not so much like taking the regular guitar pickup sound and like molding it into this genre. It's like having that core solid foundation to change in effects later. So these pickups are just passive humbuckers. The tone knob, which you can bring up to get your single coil tones. If you're not familiar, there's two core pickup sounds in electric guitar, humbuckers and single coils. And those pretty much do just about any genre. Normally guitars are either one or the other. They're also pretty simple machines. Pickups are just magnets. If you just have one of these coils like that, that's a single coil. And when you have two in a row that are wired in a certain way, that's a humbucker that has a different sound and different advantages. And with here, you get to have both. I end up using the tone control actually on distorted guitar quite a bit because the humbucker tone, you get your creamy peanut butter and then you have your crunchy peanut butter. And I end up using that actually quite a bit. Two pickups, humbucker, single coil, volume, tone, three-way switch everything I need and nothing I don't. Another thing that's pretty cool about these pickups, you can see we have the anchor on one of the coils, but this time around, this one's near the bridge and this one is near the neck. The reason that is, is when you change it to a single coil sound, you're just turning off one of the coils. And when I put out the other guitars, I saw a review from someone on YouTube. They modded it to take this pickup, which had the top pickup turn off when you go into single coil mode, they turned it around so that the single coil would be closer to the neck. Took off the strings, you know, screwed it out and just flipped it. And now the coil that is being used is closer to the bridge. Because that's what you would want in a single coil, jazzy, bluesy sound. The anchor logos on the pickups are the opposite direction. So because someone did that review and made that modification to the other one, these ones are wired that way and the anchors represent that. So when you go into single coil mode, the coils with the anchors are the ones that are on. It's just right here, getting you the, as buttery as a tone as you possibly can. Three-way switch, you can turn on just this one, both, this guy, I wanted these to be as versatile as possible. Again, I want them to do super mega distorted and very sparkly cleans. For the other models, I had them come stock with strap locks, but this time around, I just went for really honking strap buttons. Not everyone wants to use strap locks all the time, and it makes it so you have one strap that is just for this guitar now, and you can't really use it with other ones as easily. These are really, really big and will hold onto the strap, and they could probably handle a guitar flip. I don't recommend it, but they could probably handle it, but I would only use those with strap locks. I think that's pretty much it for the six string. Just a killer guitar. Give you some tones.
One of the biggest changes in these other models from the last ones, other than the headstock, most visually in the color of it, is the fan frets. Oh, I'll get my example. Why would you want fan frets? You can see on the six string, it just looks like a regular guitar. All the frets are just straight all the way through. For the eight string, you can see that this is fanned and the fan moves out to here. So the strings on the lower part of the guitar have a longer scale length than the higher strings on the guitar. I've tried a lot of eight strings and a lot of different fan fret guitars, or multi-scale is another word for it, and they never quite had the fan and scales that I wanted. They were a little bit too extreme in the fanning or the neutral fret, which is where the fan starts. Anyway, I'm getting into real guitar nerd stuff. Let me, let me get the example. Here's an example of an eight string that does not have fan frets. This is the first eight string that I ever had. I love this instrument. This is a Schecter Omen 8. I got this, immediately wrote Anchor, and just fell in love with eight strings. Since getting this one, we've advanced a little bit in extended range guitars and have made a lot of improvements since then. Our very standard scale length will be 25 and a half. But in order to accommodate these lower strings and to get good tension on them for these really low notes, this goes down to F sharp you have to make the scale length longer. When you don't have a multi-scale, you're making every string longer. You end up compensating on the higher strings, harder to bend, uh, a little bit harder to play, have a lot more tension on them than you're used to. In this case, this is 26 and a half, so this is a full extra inch of length, which makes a big change. If this stayed at 25 and a half, this low string, it would have no tension on it. It would be flubby, it wouldn't stay in tune at all. So in this one, the kind of mid ground ended up being 26 and a half scale length. Now you have high strings that are really, really tight, way tighter than you're used to, and lower strings that are way looser. And the volume of them is so much different. A big part of learning the eight string and learning this one was figuring out how to make sure the volumes between the low strings and the high strings stay the same. The way around that, it's become more standard to have a multi-scale. The scale length on the high string and the scale length of the low string are different. For this one, it can go all the way down to a 27. As you're going down the strings, everything feels natural. There isn't this huge bump. We're on a fixed scale eight string. Up here, it's too tight, too tight, too tight, and then all of a sudden it jumps, it's just like falls off a cliff and there's like no tension. It allows you to keep that same tension here, but get the tension that you need on the low string. So it's way more uniform, and this feels way more like taking a regular six string and just adding more strings to it. Rather than on that one, those top six strings feel different because of the, high, the longer scale length. But here, it's just buttery. <laughs> it just feels buttery. I feel like this is the most accessible eight string for someone who's never played an eight string. It also makes a lot of ergonomic sense. Like if I'm like playing a bar chord here, if I go down, it makes sense that my fingers would also kind of fan in that way. These higher strings here also are more comfortable to get to. We're on non-multi-scale. This area is a little bit strange. It kind of feels out there. This is like the main focus that I had on these new models is extending it to have multi-scale and make it easier to play, have the tensions on the strings be more consistent what you would want, easier to tune. There are just so many benefits to having a multi-scale on an eight string. And one big one is it's just easier to play. I'm just giving myself some uh, background music. You have three specs when you're making a multi-scale. The scale length at the highest string on the high E, then you have the scale length of the lowest string, and then you also have the neutral fret. The neutral fret is the fret that is still straight, where the fanning starts. In other fan fret guitars that I've found, the neutral fret seemed to be in a bit of a strange position all the way over here, and the fanning on this area was just too much. So I wanted to move that neutral fret down a bit. So on here, the neutral fret is the seventh. I decided on the high string for it to be the same scale length on all three of them. The same 25 and a half scale length that I've been playing my whole life, that is like the standard scale length for electric guitars, is still intact. The other strings, as they fan out, the change to them is negligible. It's only adding a little bit more. 
but then all the way on the low string for this one, you can go all the way down to a 27 inch scale length, which gives you just enough tension, but enough to where it has that characteristic of an eight string guitar. It's more accessible because the fan fret goes with your fingers. And it's not something that you really notice. You only notice it on the higher ones. Because I put the neutral fret at seven, there's more fanning over here on the bridge than there is over here. It's kind of all a balancing act. For someone that's never played eight string, I think this is the perfect multi-scale, perfect neutral fret. The seventh string is somewhere in the middle. Still the high E string is still that 25 and a half standard scale length. That goes down to 26 and a quarter for the lowest string. And so on here, it's even more subtle. The neutral fret on this one too is the ninth because it doesn't fan out nearly as much. It doesn't really look like it's a fan fret at all. It's just a little bit easier to play. You have a bit more tension. You could tune this down to A, which is a super common thing. And you still have plenty of tension in the low string to be able to play super low, super chuggy. The high strings, again, feel just like a 25 and a half scale length because that's what they are, but fan out to give you the... That, all that stuff you need. <laughs> I wish I knew some knock loose songs. Such a gigantic step up in both tone and tuning stability. And I got a lot of guitars here. Playability, ergonomics. It's just a huge jump up. I just love that this guitar can go to the most extreme distorted gent sludge and also do this. Like, that's something I think that's really special about the electric guitar in general, but especially cool about the H string guitar. <laughs> the possibilities with these instruments is still just starting to be explored. I'm really, really excited to be a part of that. In my biased opinion, because I made these guitars to my specs, these are as good as it gets. <laughs> these are gonna be out super soon, or maybe now when this video comes out, and we have them in six, seven, and eight, plus lefty versions. Thanks for Schechter for believing in me. Thanks to all you people for watching, which opens up opportunities like this. It is very, very cool that I get to design guitars just how I want them and then actually get them in stores and have a bit of a say on what guitars are out there. So I will end this video with a performance. This is the first performance I ever did with this new line of guitars. I did this at Schechter. This is for that second, the first take using these. And I think we'll just leave it at that. Thanks so much for following the channel. Uh, keep being a guitar nerd. I appreciate you. Whenever you're ready, sir. Cool. Huh? Sure. First note. <laughs> Pack it up. We're done. <laughs> Bolt it. And you're out over here.
parts a little bit, but I think we're sticking with the first take. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. Cool. That's just about these guitars. I am so, so proud of them. I think they're fucking awesome. Two times in one minute. Fucking awesome. Three. <laughs> <laughs>